So we have a huge crypto update, experiencing a notable escalation. Bitcoin transaction fees soared 100 million this week, which is absolutely incredible. So that is good news overall. Uh, what's happening, everyone? What we're seeing right now is a incredible, incredible use. So if you guys want to be kept up to date with more content like this, you know what to do. Smash that like button because we are going to be seeing more of good use overall. So here we go. What's happening with Bitcoin? Bitcoin transaction fees soared to 100 billion this week, outpacing all fees on other blockchain networks. And obviously this is expected. Ethereum is not that far behind. So that's pretty good, I would say, in a sense. Like that's where they really win long term. But I'm really interested is crypto going to be seeing some sort of a massive, massive rally? Because if that happens, everybody is going to win in that sense. Uh, but let's take a look at the most important factors right now. And that is that crypto right now is still super early. So there is definitely a room for potential opportunities. There is room for uh, things we haven't seen before. So there is going to be more of crypto price rallies, everything like that. So that's where the real excitement comes in. But I am interested, like, is crypto right now going to be changing forever as we know it? Most likely, yeah. But that being said, uh, I do think that uh, right now that Bitcoin is still getting those network upgrades that a lot of people have been waiting for on. Ethereum has just released its major update. Uh, that's where one huge opportunity lies. Like we have been waiting for Ethereum's network upgrade for about some time. And these transaction fees could actually lower Ethereum's uh, gas fees. And that's a good thing. I think the problem right now with Ethereum is it's very expensive to send anything. Look at this. Even Lido Finance, which is for Ethereum, has about... 15 million transaction fees this week, this week alone. So 100 million per month this week was just sent for crypto trading. And to me, that sounds like a lot. This this sounds like a very expensive off boot, but this is how Bitcoin works, really. You can't really change that. If we look at something like Polygon, it has very low gas fees. If you look something at like Solana, look at this, 2.4 billion. And this is why so many people are buying Solana. Uh, because it has very low gas fees. So just because this graph is low, it doesn't mean there's not a lot of users. This is a false statement, you know? It actually means that there is people buying tons of these tokens on different chains, but some of these chains are much cheaper. So just imagine something costing 2.4 billion to send, and there's probably a ton more transactions as well, versus sending just a small amount. And I think this is the big, big difference that a lot of people have been waiting for a chain that could defeat Ethereum's high gas fees, that could defeat Bitcoin's high gas fees. All through Bitcoin is going to that that ETF, which is why it's seeing so many price rises. So there is going to be probably a ton of potential uh, in the space, like on, on where we go from here. There is going to be tons of opportunities as well. And that's where I'm really excited, like uh, crypto seeing some major movements with with one of these like caspa look at this caspa's trending solana's trending why because like look at this bnb chain solana they have a ton of transactions but they don't have any fees at all even OpenSea, which is an nft it's about half of that so there is really a ton of opportunity uh in this market to see some price growth or, or something like that so that's like a really really awesome movement uh, I think a lot of people will be super excited for that. But again, there is, once we get to where people can pay their coffee without paying $5 for the transaction, just like the real world works, which is something that Caspa is working on, which is something that Solana is working on. I think this is when we're going to be seeing those big uh, bull runs in that sense. So I think that's what pe a lot of people are really excited for in that sense. So if you guys want to be kept up to date, uh, that's something you're interested in, maybe smash that like button. And, you know, Ethereum just released their new roadmap. Let me just search it up over here. So Vitalik releases update roadmap for Ethereum. So that's pretty awesome news. So maybe we're going to get lower transaction fees. 
and that's something I'm excited about. That's gonna be good. Peace out. So what's up, you guys? How much have I made with copy trading or trading on Bybit? And I'm gonna be fully transparent on this video because it's a new year, and I wanted to share you with you guys how much could you actually make in crypto and how to profit as a crypto trader. I actually redid this video because ended up a lot of people decided that it revealed some info I didn't want to share, like people's email and things like that. So we don't really want that on the video by itself. Uh, but today I'm going to be sharing everything you need to know from how much traders make to what exactly is going on. The thing I really like with Bybit, it's fully transparent. So that's one perfect thing with Bybit right now. It's you can really see the top leaderboards and the top people are making like 30k per month easily just from fees alone. I know people who are making 20k from tr other traders basically sharing their affiliate affiliate link. Uh, and with copy trading, I have really earned about $100 just to test it out. I have earned about 20% gains and then it dropped back down. And from affiliate this month, I have earned about $450 from Bybit. Uh, and also from this year, I earned about $1,400. So it might not seem like much. A lot of these traders and a lot of these crypto people, they think building uh, income is easy because they see it from other influencers, you know, making ton of money, making ton of bag. And sadly, it's not that easy. It's not the world that we live in to be super easy to be next day. You could have all this crypto for free. This, this isn't how the world works. The world re really works is you build up your videos over time. And how did I make $450 a month? Now, this in the US is nothing. It's absolutely nothing. But in some countries in Eastern Europe or Asia, it could actually cover your rent. So $450 can't do that. Uh, and that's why what I find really exciting in a sense. There is a ton of opportunities for anyone interested in crypto, really. So that's where the real excitement is. There is probably going to be more people coming in, more people going to be basically in the crypto for the long term. So that's going to be the exciting factor. But I do think the important thing right now is to focus on what you can improve, on what income you can improve. So if it's in a job and you have a stable job, you might need to work three, four years before you can get a 10% increase. That's where I find the big problem here with, with, for example, jobs. They're much more stable and convenient, but it's much harder to build that income that everybody wishes upon. And that's where I think uh, it really draws the line in that sense, where that's the problematic factor. So a lot of people, they end up not getting uh, the profits they deserve in that sense. Uh, that That's the problem. So... What you need to do is build up your own income, such as a trader. You can also, I don't know, work for someone uh, in the crypto industry. So like, what skills do you have? Do you know how to code? If you know how to code, you're set. You can make 200k a year. But there's not a lot of Solidity coders right now. These are like very rare projects. And they end up paying them a lot of tokens, a lot of different projects overall, which ends up really winning for everyone. So that being said... Uh, $450 is not a lot, but it can really build up uh, that passive income. It could be a great start to your crypto journey. If you guys want to be kept up to date, you know what to do. Smash that like button and I'll keep you guys updated. Happy New Year, guys. So I'm going to be talking more about the Sam Bankman Freed case. But the US prosecutors decided not to pursue it. And I'm going to explain why exactly this happened. So what's happening, you guys? I'm your host, Coin Central, and if you want more content like this, you know what to do. Smash that like button. Uh, I feel like a lot of people misunderstood on what's going on with crypto right now, and people think it's a real problem, it's problematic, what's going to happen next. Uh, but really, what you need to understand is crypto right now is just starting. It's just getting started, and one of that is obviously Sam Bankman Freeze trial in the new year. He lost on all counts of the first trial. And I have a bit of experience on that because I have been researching a lot about it. So the reason you have to realize on exactly what happened is 
the second trial is about government bribery, government corruption. Uh, not, sorry, political donations, political donations. That was a crime he was facing with uh, some sort. Illegal political donations, allegation of corruption, and makes an important legal turn for bank for free. They dropped that. And there is two points. Some people said it's because um, they basically, he donated about 100 million to politicans, and they're not going to claw back that because they don't know who he anonymously donated to. So that's one. Uh, we're probably not going to be seeing that money again. But they dropped this case, and a lot of people are saying that's because... People don't want to have the government know basically uh, on on everything that's going on. So I I I, th I think that's that's not true. If you ask me, I don't think like they dropped the case. I think they won on all, all counts already. So that's one problematic factor. They already won. The game is over. So there's no reason to really stay in that sense. Uh, and I think this is where the big part came in. Even if they won this one, it wouldn't uh, change that much of a thing. Like, it wouldn't change anything in that sense. Uh, and that's where I think the problem lies. Like, a lot of people were very frustrated with, basically, Sam Bankman freed losing uh, the, all the second counts. But the, se but the second trial, they just dropped it immediately uh, as they decided. So, he's going to be just sentenced on March 24th, somewhere in March. But the thing you have to know is the New York prosecutor's choice to bear significance for the legal status of allegations against Bank and Freed. And the legal landscape involves the decision that necessitates a closer examination of influencing factors and potential outcomes for the former crypto king. Uh, well, there is a problem with this. Uh, there is definitely a problem that people probably noticed. And that is, a lot of people haven't realized yet where crypto is going to go. And... Here's what I personally think. Uh, I definitely think there's going to be more of basically this trial. We're going to be seeing more of that. But Bagbed Freed's second sentencing wouldn't really change anything, um, according to some U.S. prosecutors. So that's a big difference. But again, if you guys want to be set up, st stayed up to date, you know what to do. Smash that like button and I'll keep you guys updated. Peace, everyone.